want to be clear as we introduce uh, our guest today here in studio. Back in 2000, they testified before Congress, uh, other scientists and uh, uh, environmental researchers, toxicologists. I've interviewed some of those folks. The vast majority, I think it was over 90 percent of their toxicologists uh, at the uh, EPA, uh, also the FDA had scientists send letters. The vast majority said sodium fluoride's deadly poisonous increases cancer. So it's not like th there's just a few medical doctors or scientists or toxicologists saying this. This is the vast bulk. And uh, Dr. Conan, who's always you know up on the latest info, he can correct all my numbers and go over it. But he has the new book out, The Case Against Fluoride, a new uh, look at the scientific evidence how hazardous waste ended up in our drinking water and the bad science and powerful politics that kept it there. Paul Conant, Ph.D., James Beck, M.D., medical doctor and Ph.D., uh, and others that uh, wrote wrote this uh, book. And it's got a nice uh, you know, bibliography for you to check out all the facts. This is the real science. And we're going to discuss this because you, even if you filter your water, you're bathing in it. Or it's, it's being sprayed now as a pesticide on the foods, on the crops, and then it bioaccumulates. But instead of Alex Jones talking about this, we go to Dr. Paul Conant. Uh, he is the director of the Fluoride Action Network, FAN, FluorideAlert.org, and the executive director of its parent body, the American Environmental Health Studies Project. He has spoken and given more than 2,000 presentations in 49 states and, and 52 countries on the issue of waste management. He holds a bachelor's degree from the University of Cambridge and a Ph.D. in chemistry at Dartmouth College and is a retired professor of environmental chemistry and toxicology at St. Lawrence University. He lives in Canton, New York. Again, fluoridealert.org. Congratulations on your book and your tireless efforts, sir. Thank you, Alex, very much indeed. So you've got the floor. Tell us about your awakening, the basic science. Uh, you know, go over the fact that most of the even government scientists are saying, get this out. They've approached the government, but it, but still the, the, these interests lobby millions of dollars, even in small towns, to get it in the food, get it in the water, to give the kids the fluoride pills, the toothpaste. I mean, they are just pushing this. Absolutely. Well, if people go to our webpage, they'll find over 3,000 professionals, dentists, doctors, uh, nurses, all kinds of professionals involved in health, environment, and so on, have signed a statement calling for an end to fluoridation worldwide. So I've been researching this for 14 years, and I didn't want the issue because uh, 14 years ago I was very busy teaching chemistry and working on the waste management that you just talked about, and that was taking up most of my weekends and holidays. But my wife put down this bunch of papers on my desk and said, dear, would you read these? I said, what is it? She said, fluoridation. I said, take that away. These people are crazy. Yeah, Dr. Strangelove. Yeah, absolutely. That, and that's what most people have been brainwashed to believing. And it's one technique to keep the average person, the journalist, the scientist, the doctor, the dentist away from the literature. Because if someone with an open mind reads the literature, they will be appalled, as I was that afternoon 14 years ago. And I remember saying to my wife as we were walking to the village council to discuss this, they were deciding whether to continue it or not, I said, this is going to be easy. This is going to be easy. When people hear what I read this afternoon, there's no way they're going to continue that. However, it took us seven and a half years to get fluoride out of our little village of Canton, New York, because all the dentists came in with their white coats on and the doctors and so on, and people were saying... And the AMA uh -huh. the, and, and uh, the uh, you know, major uh, organizations... Uh, they are all on record paid off by the chemical industry. Absolutely. And, and in fact, the key moment in the history of this, Alex, was in 1950 when the U.S. Public Health Service endorsed fluoridation. No trial had been completed. Practically no health studies had been published. And yet they endorsed it for the whole country. And within a few, of one or two years, all these professional organizations, the ADA, the AMA, the APHA, and so on and so on and so on, they all rolled over like a, a, a string of dominoes, uh, again, with no science on the table. So it wasn't scientific in 1950. And when people read our book, The Case Against Fluoride, they'll find it's not scientific today. They're, they're behaving just like industry, polluting industry. The first thing is deny, deny, deny. Well, I'm not an a, uh, environmental you know, expert. I'm not a, 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 a PhD in environmental chemistry and toxicology a doctor, but I can read the mainline studies. And one of the most studied things going back to even the 20s was sodium fluoride. And I've read the studies, University of Texas from the 30s about 
increases cancer, causes IQ reduction. We've given it to rats, causes infertility. And there are literally, from China, England, the U.S., Canada, thousands of studies. I mean, the, the, and these are prestigious organizations. They know full well... And, and for anybody that doubts it, just search the term fluoride cancer, and it'll be the U.S. government going, yeah, it at least doubles cancer in boys mm -hmm. and bone cancer. I mean, they know. Uh, so please continue. Yes, well, the, the um, most of the studies that have been done on health effects, and it's, you're absolutely right, there is no argument that fluoride causes health problems, health effects, because millions of people in India and China, parts of Africa and Mexico, which have high natural levels of fluoride, have been injured, seriously injured. It's a scourge. It's a scourge. And, and so the only argument then is whether there is an adequate margin of safety between the doses which we know cause harm and the doses that people are going to get. But it bioaccumulates. It bioaccumulates and the doses, and remember, once you put it in the water, you can't control the dose. You can't control how much water people drink. You can't control how much they get from other sources. And you're right, too. They're now using sulfuryl fluoride as a fumigant on foodstuffs in warehouses. And that, too, leaves residues of fluoride. And today, the Center of Disease Control said that 41% of American children, 41% of American children between the ages of 12 and 15 have dental fluorosis. And that's the f indicator that the child has been overexposed to fluoride. And this is the government. This is the government that promotes fluoridation, is admitting, whoops, 41% of our kids have been overexposed to fluoride. But it only hurts the teeth. Doesn't hurt anything else, for which they have no scientific evidence, but... That's In fact, it's to the contrary. It's to the contrary, yes, absolutely. I mean, the thing that concerns me most, and one of those facts I learned 14 years ago, was the level in mother's milk is extremely low as far as fluoride is concerned, extremely low, 0 0.004 parts per million. This means... The body thinks it's bad and is, and is designed to filter it. Absolutely. Um, this means a bottle-fed baby in Austin or any other uh, town that's fluoridated is getting 250 times more fluoride than nature intended. But, but what about the studies that, that show a 10 to 20, it's in that spectrum, yeah. if, if, if a young mammal, this is rats, guinea pigs, humans, rhesus monkeys, are given it, there's an overall IQ reduction uh, of 10 to 20 points. I mean, this is devastating. Well, these are studies from, mainly from China. There have been about 18 from China, another one from Iran, in Mexico, and um, uh, India. And yes, they have found a lowering of IQ associated with fairly moderate exposure, like 1.9 parts per million. And I went to the two China, villages in China where they establish that level. So if you're lowering IQ at 1.9 parts per million in a study group of a few hundred kids, you don't have anywhere near an adequate margin of safety to protect the whole. Well, many U.S. cities have two, three, four. The average is what, about one part per million? And again, from, from I mean, studying fluoride on the periodic table, you correct me if I'm wrong, isn't this one of the worst things to bioaccumulate? I mean, it's really good at that. Well, no, you have to distinguish between fluorine, which is the most reactive element in the periodic table, and and fluoride, which is the compound, which in, in, in terms of chemistry, it's lost all its fury. You know, it's a fairly stable. This is like co comparing chlorine gas, which everybody knows is toxic. The chlorine in your pool. Uh, yeah, and sodium fluoride, which is common salt. So that's what it means to compare fluorine with fluoride. But the catcher and the real worrying thing is that fluoride is extremely active biologically. All right, stay there. That's what Dr. Blaylock says. He says it ties in and boosts everything else. We'll be right back. Okay, Dr. Connick, you got cut off by the break. You were talking about uh, sodium fluoride. Uh, 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 well, I mean, the term you use is the same one that medical doctors have used here. Explain that. Uh, the, sorry. The, Very reactive. Yes, the sodium fluoride is not chemically reactive, but the fluoride ion is extremely biologically Active. It interferes with enzymes, G-proteins, you name it. It strikes at the very heart of biology. And that's probably why nature, in her wisdom, has kept it very low in mother's milk. And we, in our foolishness, are giving babies now 250 times more fluoride than nature intended. Foolishness. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is foolish. And if, They know, though, and they're doing it. Uh... One of the things we all agree upon is that babies of one year of age should not get 
of fluoride. So they are actually warning the age. That's right. You and others have forced the American Dental Association, what, five years ago to change course. Yeah, they are saying don't use bot uh, tap water, fluoridated tap water, to make up formula. But they're not telling the parents. So, Alex, can you help us? We, we need to get every water department in the country that's fluoridated to warn parents not to use... See, doctor, and I want to give you the floor here because okay. you're the scientist. I want you to go over the, the science, and I want to shut up. Yeah, okay. Because you've got to leave to go to talk to the city council people, yeah. or I'd go into overdrive today, and you're coming back for a video interview we're doing. Oh, really? But, but, but yeah, but, but, but listen... Five years ago, when the American Dental Association said, okay, young children shouldn't have this, it causes dental fluorosis and problems in babies, yeah. suddenly every major water manufacturer of bottled water came out and said fluoride water for kids, and it's at several parts per million. So, no, people try to say warn kids, their answer is, no, it's good, have it. Yeah. So, come on. But uh, we're not going to get into why they're doing it. Let's continue with the science. Well... This is the, the first step, is to make sure, whilst we're trying to get fluoride out of the water, let's at least warn parents not to make up that formula. As I said, 41% of American kids now have dental fluorosis, and the worst year is that first year for exposure to fluoride. But what I'm concerned about is that when the baby is born, the blood-brain barrier is not fully formed. Now, not until about half a year of age. So in that first half year... The blood-brain barrier that would normally keep fluoride out of the brain does not. And with these IQ studies now, 23 IQ studies, I mean, what's more important, to protect children's teeth or to protect their brains? Uh, doctor, I have a CBS clip where they say mercury is good for children's brains. Uh, but I'm sure that's just an accident. I'm sure they're just wrong. Uh, but, uh, again, uh, mothers everywhere buying the special fluoride water, they say, for your baby. Nursery water. It's absolutely obscene. Just a, a Oh, but it's an accident. No, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the National Research Council came out with this 507-page report in 2006, March of 2006. And they, they, what they said here, they were asked to review the safe drinking water standard, which is currently set at four parts per million. And they looked at all the literature, spent three years doing it, and said the four parts per million is not safe, it needs to be lowered. Ask the EPA, who paid for this review, to do their homework, do a risk assessment, and come out with a, a new safe... Well, we've got a long segment coming up, but I want, they haven't done it. I want to go back specifically to the testimony in Congress and the numbers of the scientists uh, from the EPA itself who, and, and the Food and Drug Administration who, who said get it out. Yeah, these were several unions representing all these professionals, and I think the total number of members of these unions was something like 11,000. But one of the most active unions, and this is in Washington, D.C., where these regulations are being dealt with every day, uh, they are very much adamantly opposed to fluoridation. In fact, the EPA in Washington, D.C. doesn't have fluoridated water. They all have bottled water down in the EPA. And yet the rest of the people in Washington, D.C. are having to drink this fluoridated water. Oh, but it's an accident. I mean, all the, almost all of their scientists, I've seen the numbers, in some cases over 90% of the unions, uh, are, are writing letters, putting their names to it, but then the government says, not only are we not going to take it out, we're going to have all the companies say nursery water. But you know, with fluoride for baby. It's, it's, you know what's absurd here? They just want to help, doctor. Yeah. The National Research Council did all the work that was necessary to determine a new, a new uh, safe level for drinking water. And they asked the EPA to do that four and a half years ago. It would take you about half an hour if I showed you what you have to do to join the dots. And the EPA has not come out with a new standard. Why? Is it because they can't do simple arithmetic? Is it because they can't read this? No. They are scared stiff of crossing swords with the Department of Health and Human Services that have had this practice going on for 60, 60 years. Which was set up by eugenicists for racial hygiene, and Hitler took the model from that. But I know, doctor, let's come back. Long segment coming up. Let's get into the science and your plan, the book. How we get this removed, we're having success all over the world. How we stop them from adding this chemical weapon to the water.